They are a, a piranha plant player. No, and one okay. more. No, I was I. It popped up on screen right as I was about to say it. But yeah, one of the very few remaining uh, holdouts of Plant Gang, bringing it to you here from uh, at Fusion, going to show us what they're made of. Getting into game one, this is going to be very interesting because I, for one, can't wait to see how things like Plant's uh, neutral B, Patui, interacts with Bayo because it can literally just ruin Bayo's day. If Bayo goes for an approaching side B and Plant is just holding onto a Patui, it's over for Bayo. <laughs> Yeah, there's something to be said about that because Bayo generally has to guess with their options in neutral. You can't really just uh, up be your way to victory anymore with this uh, with this character. It requires a little bit more a uh, little bit Stonking. more fundies, but also just a little bit of guesswork. So it seems with a lot of uh, according to a lot of the people that play Bayo, even though you do get a lot if you are uh, if you are correct just feels a little awkward so a lot of bayos uh so a lot of bayos say here gordon i was wondering what your thoughts were on uh on this matchup um i think it's gonna be really weird because bayo's generally really good at just uh fighting you in the air but but is just such a good option where you have to respect it so much or even if you hit plant the the spike ball still has an active hitbox so like, especially right there bayos usually like to go side b from ledge but you can't really do that option if plant has a spike ball covering himself so. Right, and one thing that I really, really want to point out that I neglected to say earlier. In this game, uh, like Stu mentioned, Bayo cannot just up be her way to victory. Bayo's actually quite often struggle to get kills in this game. And Piranha Plant is a relatively heavy character. So getting kills in this matchup is going to be a challenge for Amaryllis. Going down to an up throw at 164, 56, pulling out early with the lead, trying to move on, get as much extra credit built up, and is looking to make this his game. I mean, you talk about relatively heavy. I believe they're actually in the top eight heaviest characters. If I'm, uh, I'm gonna look up what Parada Plants weight is. Yeah. If, if you've ever done any sort of gardening at all, you know that potted plants are extremely heavy when they're like the size yeah, that Parada Plant you... is. If you have to move pots inside, lift from the legs, please. Do that yeah, for yourself. Yeah, no, you'll throw it back out. That, that stuff hurts. You really will. Like, ceramic is nothing with which to be trifled. And Pitu neither is Pitui, as they're going to try to control wow. the edge guardian game. Not utilizing that gas uh, enough, I don't think. But then again, Amaryllis knowing to expedite their recovery so that 56 doesn't have time with which to... Uh, with which to control the space on the left. So quick update, you were correct. Piranha Plant is exactly eighth for the uh, the weightless tier. Just outside of the super oh, heavyweight oh, level, finding himself right below Insin and Charizard, Piranha Plant has a weight value of 112, outclassing characters like Bowser Jr., Richter, Samus, Dark Samus, and even Rob. Yeah, I figured, I knew that they were uh, that they were really heavy. I just didn't know exactly where. Okay, so it was it, cool. Um, either way, that poison gas, uh, it, it always feels good to get something right about uh, those weird inning facts about the game. But uh, yeah, it just goes to show this is why you don't, uh, that's why you don't lift with your back when you're doing plants. Yeah, lift with your that. legs is always the answer. I'm, I'm promising you. But Ask me how holding I know, on everyone. to this. Go ahead. But uh, either way, Amaryllis, sorry about yeah, that. 56 that just holding happen. on to this stock, refusing to go down. Amaryllis trying to get maybe a witch time going. Take this out with an F smash. But 56, I don't know if that was luck or skill, but not getting caught by the option there. What and is the, the difference in this better. game, that down smash? Wow, look at that angle. That's just like, I don't think, I, I, I definitely have seen that angle before. I'm not going to lie to you. But I, I was about to say, like, I've never seen that before. I definitely have, but it's quite rare to get sense at that angle. That angle looks like it shouldn't be allowed. Like, it's it's not even just straight across. It's straight across and slightly downward, which is... You kind of go, like, sliding it's... across the edge of the stage, and then the downward momentum kicks in. Yeah, that's, that's super good for Plant. I mean, you yeah. have to have some pretty decent options if you're uh, if you're a plant, because otherwise it's uh, it's not really a great time for you. But uh, plant, we were talking a little bit about Poke fans. That was just one of the many people that Amaryllis wound up taking down on their way to a victory at Xeno Wi-Fi just last week, finishing first out of 46 combatants and wound up uh, beating and the Tom. Robin coming out. Wow. Yeah, wound up. Uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, because they did wind up going uh, Robin. In that yeah, I, I know for a fact the... Amaryllis has a pocket robin that they bring out for 
some of Bayonetta's more difficult matchups. And this, I guess, from what we saw right there, is one of them. Thank you so much, Money Mark 180, for the follow as well. <laughs> Oh, Money Mark 180. See, I love it. I love it when I see wrestling references because, you know, coming from the wrestling business, it's, uh, it, makes, it makes me smile. So either way, uh, Amaryllis, the, uh, the bubblegum Robin, as we've come to know her, is going to be deployed. And again, this is one of those things I don't feel like you've struggled if you're... Uh, if you were the Bayo that round, but you also just want to keep this Robin fresh and uh, in tournament condition. You know what I mean? Because you never know when you're going to need it in the later rounds. 56 may be getting a little too, uh, little too frisky going off stage. Remember, you are a potted plant for a reason. And it's Amaryllis. Oh, man. You know Ooh, what happens when you goodness. set plants on fire? It's, it's the way we were talking about earlier. Keeping plant alive there. Go. That's uh, and, and it really has to come in handy here on the uh, on the shortest ceiling in competitive. So down smash going to give themselves just a little bit of space. Probably the best uh, get off uh, get off me option that you're having is, uh, aside from that uh, little short hop in there. Wow. Pretty fast. But down B finding its mark and that's a vibe check right there. Yeah, using the down B to stall in the air over top of the arc fire catch Robin going in. Uh, it was it was pretty obvious what Amaryllis wanted. They wanted either the up tilt or the up air off of the arc fire to finish that stock off. And 56 obviously knew it was coming, catching the uh, catch, catching uh, Amaryllis lacking right there with the down B. But instead, Amaryllis immediately firing back after respawning with that 11 sword back air. There is no surviving that at 150, no matter how heavy you are. So we're at back to almost a fully even game. And wow, Amaryllis reading the jump out from 56, catching the second arc fire despite the DI from 56 and getting way more percent than probably this plant wanted to take. You can only imagine the... Uh... He's got the lemon oh, sword. He's got the plant with sword. a sword. Oh my God, plants with sword. <laughs> he piranha plant with the lemon sword. What will he do? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. And, you, and you, I know that Dude, someone's going to make that Photoshop at some point. But Dude, I imagine really you go outside to do some gardening to clip, like, your hedges or something, and then they have a sword waiting for you. You go out to like... clip your hedge, but instead your hedge clips you. Exactly. That would be scary. It's probably going to be the stock right here. And, yes, a full battle reset, 0% on both of them. Final stock, 4 minutes and 30 left on the clock. Let's see where we go from here. Yeah, and uh, 56 right now, giving Amaryllis all they can handle have not really been. Uh, I I'm surprised that they're not uh, noticing this uh, this plant matchup or not really recognizing it, considering uh, how much they hang out with Hangman. I realize uh, Hangman is a pretty decent plant himself, gotta say. But it's you know it's that all that experience from all of those plants you find on Wi-Fi. Oh, no, All I'm talking about up in Long Island, just... just no, uh... it's, I, I do believe, truly, this is one of the matchups, uh, as someone who plays Piranha Plant myself, I believe this is one of the matchups that changes the most on Wi-Fi. My game plan as a Wi-Fi plant is completely different than my game, play, game plan as a offline plant. Um, and it's really interesting to see, uh, like you're saying, Amaryllis probably does, thanks to Hangman, have a lot of experience in this matchup, but maybe not on Wi-Fi that makes sense yeah so you're just used to uh seeing different options and having this uh character optimized in a different way and you can't figure it out and that's why you're sitting at 126 percent oh patooey gonna send them to the corner one more hit will do it and that's yeah, one of the things of that's so right much now. different like patooey is a really good option but it's better on wi-fi not going to matter though with amarula capitalizing off of the arc fire and getting that kill we're going to game three right now. But as I was saying, I do firmly believe that Patui is much better on Wi-Fi because it's much harder to react to. Patui is really bad if your opponent consistently parries. It, and that just doesn't happen. Yeah, parrying is not really a thing that you can do consistently on Wi-Fi, so. You know, at the, uh, we saw 56 have amazing control of the ledge at the end of that game with Patui. Just either sending Emerald is off stage or to the other side of the stage and just resetting the situation. But Emerald finds the opening, gets in with the dark fire, and then takes the sock with that up smash combo. And it was very well executed as well. I mean, it's just situational awareness and also not being afraid to go in. The difference between being afraid to lose and uh, playing to win. 
Well, Amaryllis having to show that there, and uh, even though they were getting tagged around at the ledge quite a bit, literally one Patui away at the ledge from uh, losing that set and going down to losers by a score of 2-0, to nil. but instead we're drawn up at 1. Question now is what does Amaryllis do to carry forth this momentum? Because there were occasions where they got caught off guard and quite frankly called out by the plant at 56. Going into this game three, Amaryllis very, very respectably sticking to the Robin matchup here. Uh, going to be seeing if they can repeat that surprise success at the very end of the game. As I would honestly say that that game was a steal. It looked like during those edge guards that 56 had that one on lock using the Fatuis to their maximum effect. And Amarillo's just barely managing to steal it with the arc fire up tilt. But let's see if the performance can be repeated. But no, 56 starting off with a solid 58%. Don't. <laughs> oh my god. Sometimes it like, really do be like that, honestly. Like that, like, no, but what's that? It just. Usually when Robin do that, they have to jump in the air to connect the arc fire to each other, but like, Plant just kind of didn't move, so even Robin didn't have to move either. Vibin? <laughs> that uh... that down B in neutral is, is very interesting to see 56 using, but Amarillo's capitalizing on that mistake right there and getting the first stock. I don't think that was down B. I think that was just them crouching. And if you jump on top of plant when you crouch, you just get attacked. It's never worked. Oh, to be honest, it does like 2%. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's interesting when you see it happen. And it's always that little- uh, I thought it was a down B that got canceled by the- uh, by... <laughs> I'm not sure though. Actually, it, it might've been. You just don't see that option too often. But oh. 56 getting that F smash on the landing right there. That looked like it might have even been on a reaction. Um, mm. Going up right here, spot dodging through the Nosferatu and getting some nice percent with that poison cloud. Oof. And there you go. That's uh, that big hitting, uh, that big hitting action that Amaryllis is trying to, uh, oh, Amaryllis is trying to deploy. 56 again, you're catching Amaryllis. Spaced out a little too much. Yeah, the there, but oh, you're like getting this. sniped. Amril is getting that lightning kill in the, in the blast zone. Oh man, Arc Thunder. Yeah, we have seen some quality, quality snipes from Robins thus far in this tournament. And I do not foresee that stopping. Especially because uh, Plant does have the misfortune of being quite a large target to get hit. Fifty-six controlling stage. And the Patui getting... snipe right there. Bringing 56 firmly back into this game from what looked like it could have been a slight, uh, what could have become, excuse me, an inescapable deficit if it went on for too much longer. We're almost fully even right here, going into what could be a last stock, last hit scenario for either player. And just throwing this is the their winner's up. side life. Yeah, and uh, 56. Amarillo is doing a good job of telling 56 exactly where they cannot stand, giving themselves just a little bit of space to get back to ledge. However, you are relying then on neutral get up pretty much and pretty much making 56 challenge that. Question is, how does Amaryllis capitalize upon that reaction as we are nearing death percent for both of these players? Who's gonna blink first? 56 trying to call out uh, Amaryllis going low, but Amaryllis always been one to take the high road. Still, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think I blinked before either of them did because my screen just lagged and I can't see anything that's going on right now. <laughs> oh man, that could just be the clouds of uh, smoke getting to you, man. You might want to bring some eye drops next time as 56 is looking to get a blinding victory, though a blinding Thoron is going to miss their mark. But oh the end smash straight into incredible. the jugular of that Robin and Amaryllis is going to suffer the loss. 56, talk about two different numbers right now. Two to one. Stu, Gordon, do you know yeah. what this means?